Hello everyone, welcome to Vicar David's uh, morning prayer for Friday. Uh, I'm so sorry it's been such a long time since I've posted anything. Uh, if you don't already know, I was tested positive for COVID. So I was uh, effectively out of action for uh, a few weeks, but uh, feeling much better now. Uh, although still not much sense of taste or smell. Well, some people might say that's a good thing with my cooking. Uh, I don't necessarily agree with them. Anyway, I'm back now. So uh, we're going to start the uh, postings again and we start it um, again on uh, for Friday for morning prayer. Um, as usual, from the beautiful, rich and um, poetic language of the Book of Common Prayer, the prayer book. When the wicked man turneth away from his wickedness that he hath committed and doeth that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul alive. I will rise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places, to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do, when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore I pray and beseech you as many as are here present to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying after me, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws, and we have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. 
the Benite Exaltimus Domino. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation, and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways, unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The words of the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies, from the hands from all that hate us. To perform the mercy promised to our forefathers, and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he swore to our forefather Abraham, that he would give us, that we, being delivered out of the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called a prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, we pray thee that thou, Grace, may always prevent and follow us, and make us continually to be given to all good works, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. reading for today is taken from the gospel according to Matthew chapter 6 beginning to read at verse 16. And whenever you fast do not look dismal like the hypocrites for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly I tell you they have received their reward but when you fast put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others but by your father who is in secret, and your father, who sees in secret, will reward you. So do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where the thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. One freezing cold January morning in 1943, a farmer was um, breaking the solid rock ice hard ground in his field um, in Cambridge near Mildenhall. And the, uh, the farmer's name was Gordon Butcher. And he came across what he thought was um, some kind of metal sheet uh, about a, a, a foot long like this, in width. Um, and stopped the tractor and bent down, picked it up, and what it felt like um, uh, a kind of pewter uh, metal. And he could see inscriptions on it, and he knew it was something historical that had been buried in the ground. So he, he, he took it to the landowner, the local landowner who owned the farm, uh, a man called Sidney Ford. And Sidney Ford was a 
fascinated collector of antiquities, especially things that came up from the ground archaeologically. And he recognised the inscriptions on what he thought was this sheet of uh, metal as Roman. He also could see that he knew this was a, a Roman plate uh, reading off. So he went back with Gordon, a butcher, to the place where it had been found and uh, dug up the surrounding area and found in all 33 different artefacts, all um, uh, from dating from the same period in the Roman times, and put them all on his, took them away, cleaned them up and put them on his mantelpiece, uh, this uh, what he uh, believed to be pewter collection of Roman artefacts. A few weeks later, he was entertaining a guest um, from the university, and uh, this guest was an expert in, in Roman archaeology, and recognised straight away that these artefacts were not, in fact, pewter, but cleaned up very uh, simply, uh, uh, rubbed um, with some cleaning fluid, were shown to be solid silver, making them exceptionally rare and exceptionally valuable indeed, called the Milden Hall Hoard um, treasure, uh, bought then by the British Museum, and each man, the landowner, Sidney Ford, and the uh, farmer, Gordon Butcher, each received in 1943 £2,000 each, which uh, it was a tidy sum in those days, equating probably to around ten uh, to around £100,000 each in those days. This story seems to, uh, on the face of it, give lie to the gospel story which we just heard about not burying your treasure in the ground um, and uh, treasure not being found uh, in, in buried places where it can rot and rust and wear away. Because uh, each man received £100,000 and I, I can tell you I wouldn't mind receiving £100,000. Um, but, and yet, the treasure itself was only of limited value, however uh, unique, uh, however special the hoard may be. Uh, both men, uh, Gordon uh, Butcher and Sidney Ford, are now uh, long since not been with us, gone to the uh, rest eternal. So they couldn't take the rewards with them. Certainly the Roman, whoever it was who buried the treasure in the ground, um, couldn't enjoy the value of it or anything else because it was just left there for 2,000 years. So in this, essentially we see the truth behind that gospel reading um, to be uh, true down the centuries, that uh, it's not so much that um, none of us would like a, a few more pounds a week in a pay packet, uh, I certainly would, um, or some investment or some kind of windfall. It's just that these things in themselves are not the things that make us truly, really happy. These things are uh, maybe help us to enjoy a bit more of life, but they will not bring us uh, true fulfilment, true happiness in itself. In contrast, the treasures that God um, offers us of peace, joy, love, trust, fulfilment, hope, living life to its full, these are things which we know will make us uh, truly, deeply uh, and most fulfilled and fully happy. And I think that I don't need to say to, to any of you that if you think what is the most valuable part of your life, it won't be some object which you can bury or otherwise. It won't be anything you can go and purchase, no matter how much money you had. It'll be things to do uh, with living a, a satisfied and fulfilled life and relationships and all the things that go along with uh, being a whole and a rounded and a happy person. And I think this is what the essence of this story is, that no matter how much um, we might um, benefit by having uh, extra things in our lives. These are things that are not there all the time and they will not bring us the true happiness that God himself will bring. And in contrast to that kind of one-off um, buried treasure trove, the building hall trust or whatever else it, it might be, that, that is literally a one-off. That is one hoard, it's one treasure trove. In contrast, the um, treasures that God offers to us are offered every day in fact every moment they're always there they're never exhausted they're always available and they are always on offer for us to reach out and to uh, take and to humbly um, walk humbly uh, receiving the treasure that God in his infinite love and generosity 
offers to us, not once, but all the time. Let's just pray. Forgive me, Lord, for I'd forgotten how rich I was. I looked at others and saw what they earned, what they owned, and I was jealous, asking why I shouldn't have the same. And before I knew it, instead of appreciating what I had, I find myself dwelling on all I didn't have, wanting more of this, more of that, more of everything. Yet whatever I acquired, I coveted something else. Possessions failing to satisfy as I'd expected, pleasing enough for a moment, but the shine soon fading. I'd lost sight, Lord, of what's truly of value, joy, peace, hope, love. The knowledge that I'm valued by you, accepted for what I am, the assurance of your forgiveness, the daily experience of your presence by my side and deep within. There's no price I can put on those, for their worth is beyond measure, too wonderful for words, yet you offer them freely, not just now, but for all eternity. Save me then from chasing after illusory happiness, from attempting to fill my life with what can never truly fulfil. Teach me simply to look to you and to open my heart to your grace, recognising that you have blessed me in abundance and that I am rich indeed. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. 
and do thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy servants, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance, to do always that is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time, with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfil now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost, be with us all evermore. Amen. Well, thank you very much for sharing in this Book of Common Prayer Matins, this worship, and uh, I hope you've enjoyed the service. And um, please remember that both churches are open twice a week, on a Sunday, Emmanuel 9.30, and St Francis 10.30, um, and on a Wednesday, St Francis 10 a.m., and on a Thursday evening, Emmanuel at 7.30 p.m. It'll be lovely to see as many people as possible there, and there'll be uh, services broadcast, uh, shown on the YouTube channel, and uh, regular um, uh, videos posted now uh, upon my uh, uh, return from enforced absence. It's lovely uh, to be back. So uh, please continue to take care because believe me, you don't want uh, the virus. Please um, uh, continue to take care and to keep safe and God bless.